Do y'all have some over ear headphones that you can use for class today? Yes, sir. Excellent. All right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, for homework this week, it was supposed to read a little bit of chapter three and also kind of get a head start on this field recording project. So I'll ask the first question. Um, did everybody read chapter three? <laughs> what, was uh, chap what was chapter three about? Well, it was about, uh, uh, as you were talking about, uh, probably methods about the uh, recording room and then acoustic treatments and all of that and different um, expectations and, and a different type of like uh, studios, I believe. Okay, excellent answer. Can someone piggyback off of that? So the, 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 the chapter title for chapter three is Studio Acoustics and design so within the reading or within some of this i've kind of been talking about this stuff a little bit already as we've been going but who can tell me um what is what is an ideal studio or recording space look like um it an idea well you know a one that that doesn't have any like acoustic Oh, oh, I get. I guess the echoes, right? Is that what you're talking about? Sure. Yeah. So let's take a look at let's take a look at this slideshow if y'all can see it. So what about um, what about this picture makes it an ideal space to like listen to music critically? Well, uh, we have some some uh, speakers. We have a, 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 a mixing console. We also have um, some lights, you know, some acoustic treatment, and and yeah, that's basically it. Seems mm -hmm. You want to you want to fill in the blanks on on some other stuff that you were gonna say. Oh, um, wait, it has the the monitor the the speakers so that you can hear it out loud. Um, I don't know if there's any headphones in there, but you know. The over ear headphones, over ear headphones, are ideal for recording studio, so you can listen to it critically, like really closely. Um, it also looks like it's uh, acoustically treated. Yeah, like the, check out check out this. Room. It's almost like a piece of art. Um, this uh, wooden, they're basically like wooden um, blocks that are just all kind of randomly stacked on top of each other. And so that way, when the sound hits the wall, it kind of breaks up in, in different ways, um, which is which is what kind of helps tame some of the room. So when you listen critically in there, it'll sound a bit more balanced um, and, and it, it won't be bouncing all over the walls like if you were uh, like in a gym or maybe just in your living room, um, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so. Today, we're going to be talking about recording studio acoustics and design. So let's first talk about what acoustics are. Can somebody read this out loud? It's the definition that's in the book. All right. Um, acoustics. Defined as a science dealing with the production effects and transmission of sound waves. The transmission of sound waves through various mediums, including reflection, refraction, diffraction, absorption, and interference. The characteristics of auditoriums, theaters, and studios, as well as their design. Okay, so within that little uh, paragraph, there's there are some key words that I'd like for us to write down and possibly look up, so that way we can have a little bit of a better standing of um, better understanding of like what these words mean. So some of those words include um, sound waves. Okay, so basically what sound waves are, that's like what, so it, it, any, it, like literally any sound that gets produced, uh, what that basically is, is vibrations in the air. Okay, so whether you sing a note, whether you play a drum or clap your hands, basically all that is is just vibrations in the air that our ears pick up. Okay, and so, um, as we noticed last week when I put the audio into the computer, uh, the computer turns that audio into ones and zeros and into waves, like actual waves that, that, that are printed in the computer. And so that's like the digital 
um, representation of sound. Okay, and then next would be um, reflection. What do you think the word reflection means? Like when you look at your reflection in the mirror. It's like you're kind of seeing seeing, uh, seeing yourself, right? It's like the, the frequencies could be doubled in a negative way. And so all of these key words, I'd like for you all to look up, okay? I'd like for you all to, and then we'll talk about this next week. Can you look up reflection, refraction, diffraction, absorption, and interference? Can y'all write those words down? And I'd like for you to I'd like for you to just kind of you can just Google it, and and then we'll talk about it next week, okay? Because it helps it helps uh, to have a little bit of a better understanding of some of the science of recording. That way, it'll make you a, a way better engineer. Okay, so where this comes into play is in the characteristics of auditoriums, theaters, and studios, as well as their design, which is sort of what I wanted to talk about today a little bit. Um, check this out. Who can tell me what this picture is of? Maybe what maybe what time period it's from too? Or a little bit about it. Um I know like the um area around it looks like kind of like um a smaller version of like a sort of like battle um dome or coliseum. Okay. Can you tell me like um what what like country or like region this is from in the world okay. would it be like somewhere oh sorry what was it sorry go ahead um i was for some reason in my head i was thinking like somewhere like around europe yeah that's right so it'd be like around greece um so like um have y'all have y'all read in school or learned about um how like i guess it's just like in general like the ancient greek life you know what i mean when when uh we learned about people like plato and aristotle and like that that kind of stuff yes no yeah. okay so the reason why this is important is because for centuries um people have had to think about acoustics in natural and unnatural ways and so in this picture, it's basically showing us how even even way back, even way back when, you know what I mean? Early parts of the world, early parts of time, um, this stuff was important. So like if someone was if someone were to speak down here or sing or tell a story, um, all these people are able to hear it because of how of like the natural acoustics are in this area. And that's that's where the design comes into play. Where we're, it says on the thing, which is like recording studio acoustics and design. So the design part is like this: where if you're if you're trying to build your own studio, or if you're trying to build your own outdoor performance venue, or, or something, the, this is these are all things to think about um, that that like you as the engineer um, would need to know. Um, does anyone have any questions about? this or maybe a little bit more about the history of why this is a thing um no but that actually makes sense the way the way everything it's uh, being arranged you know that actually makes sense now basically it's like a natural like amplifier and uh and you'll notice and you'll notice that throughout time people have utilized this design in places like opera houses also right. uh, performance venues like here's another example um, have y'all ever heard of this venue? It's called Red Rocks Amphitheater. That's in Colorado. It's a really Never. famous. It's a really famous performance venue because it's like beautiful. It's like outside. It's a. It's a. a of course, the stage was built here. Um, but as you can see, there's like a big slab of rock, um, and there's and there's some chairs and stuff. And here's a better view of it from behind. As you can see, it's like a beautiful landscape. Um, and this is this was kind of like a natural spot that would have been great for an amphitheater. And so that's why the city uh, built one here. And what's cool is that um, this this performance venue is uh, an 11 time winner for best small outdoor venue. And my question to you all is, is that is that just by coincidence or did or is this just like a naturally good like acoustic spot for a performance venue? You know what I mean? Those are things you got to think about. Um, and the answer is um, 
Well, it's because it's it's like a nat it's like a a natural spot for something like this. So that's why a lot of people think it's beautiful and sounds great. Um, so this would be great. Have y'all ever have y'all ever seen a concert like that before, or like an outdoor performance where it's like at a kind of like an outdoor amphitheater or something? Uh, no, never. <laughs> no, that's okay. So here's an example of another type of acoustic thing with concerts. Um, this would be an example of a terrible listening environment. Who can tell me why? Um. <clears throat> Sorry, the the other one was more like the the slant, and so like the 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 music and the noise would be like amplified up. But this one is the other one is like super flat, so like the sound goes everywhere. Yeah. So basically, if you're not if you're not standing like within this area, like if you're standing way over here, it might be tough to like really hear any clarity. Um, and also too, it's you know, if you're sitting way up front, you know, your ears going to get blown off. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is just not, this is probably not the most ideal way to listen to music because it's just got these big old speakers blaring forward instead of something that kind of scoops up the sound and carries it around. You know what I mean? So those are things to think about, especially when it comes to designing your own studio uh, building or room. Because if you look at your living room or your bedroom, it's just four walls or five walls and a ceiling. You know what I mean? Um, and so you got to think about how you can alter that room a little bit so that way the sound can be controlled or manipulated any way that you'd like, which is kind of what we're going to talk about today, too. Okay, last but not least, for performing arts centers, um, remember that for centuries architects had to rely on natural acoustics for amplification. We still preserve this tradition today for all genres of music, but mainly for orchestral and opera. So here's the Tobin Center downtown. And it's just this long kind of performance hallway. And then there's like this curve. So that way, when the sound comes out, it's able to come to all these people. And there's not really a bad seat in the house. And this was done on purpose um, to like help kind of naturally amplify the sounds of the San Antonio Symphony. So everybody can hear that. Um, does this sort of make sense of why this is still a relevant like thing that's going on? It's like it's like a relevant like um, a tradition and architecture yes sir okay this same kind of thing has been going on for centuries because if you look at any opera house um it's kind of designed the same way where like one singer is supposed to be able to be heard by the entire performance venue okay let's talk about some studios now this is actually a studio here in san antonio it's called Stone Creek Sound. This is probably one of my favorite studios here in town because it looks really beautiful. It's like out in the country. I think it's out in Bernie, um, which is sort of San Antonio. But um, this is one of the studios that I wanted to talk about today because um, this is kind of more within our ballpark of what we could do, maybe in a house or a space. And it doesn't really have a ton of crazy paneling or anything like that. It's more of a natural space. So who can tell me what are the pros and cons of, of being in a natural space versus one that's got a ton of acoustic panels in it. Um, probably the sound quality of the uh, instruments. Um, let's say uh, if I was playing the, uh, the uh, guitar, the electric guitar, probably uh, um, the sound wave of uh, that electric guitar sound will um, hit the uh, the uh, snare drum or the one of the cymbals, you know, and make it sound while playing or, or get that extra feedback sound, you know, out of it. Um, so, yeah. Gabriel, That's... Desiree, what are some pros and cons to playing in a room like this? That, that was an excellent answer, by the way. Thank you. All right. um, anybody else? Um, I think, the, the this this uh, space here, uh, this natural space, it gives it, um, I, I don't know, like, like the, the sound, okay. I think the sound would be better, I guess. Um, <laughs> but like, if you want it more like crisp, I guess, you would want like a whole bunch of equipment. Okay. So, so if you still want to have that natural sound. Yeah, yeah. Can y'all write this down? So we're going to listen to some audio examples in a second, but some some descriptive words that you could use 
in a space like this would be it'll open up the sound it'll be a little bit more airy you can hear more room sound um, versus if you were to use a space that has a ton of panels in it you could use a, you could use a descriptive words like the sound is more focused or it's um, a little bit more dry or short staccato you know you can use words like that and um, so basically the difference is in a studio like this, it's going to have a more open sound, a little bit more airy, you're going to hear more room sound, and then in a room that's like got a ton of panels in it, it's just going to be more focused, more direct, um, it's like a little bit shorter sound. Okay, so we're going to listen to some audio from this studio, and y'all are going to tell me what you hear. But first, this is their console room. Um, who can tell me, maybe Gabriel or Desiree, uh, what you see in this room? Um, that maybe helps with like treatment. Um, the the panels on the wall. Yep. Do you see? Um, how, do you see how in this corner right here, he's got it positioned to where it kind of flattens out the the corner of the wall. It's not like a hard corner. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's important because when the sound is bouncing around. Uh, corners like this, you want to you want to try to have it kind of covered up. Um, that way, the sound can kind of skip instead of going straight into a corner. Um, so that that's that's one thing to take note of too in this room. Um, also, they've got they've got some panels on the side too of their mixing position. Okay, here's a really crucial picture. Can y'all take a screenshot of this? Okay, um, this is basically a diagram of how you should have your mixing position. So whenever you're sitting in your studio, that's that's your head, the top of your head, and your nose. Nose is pointing this way. So you've got your two speakers, left and right. Okay. When that when that sound comes to you, it sorry, it's also going to shoot back and bounce off the walls as well. And so this little picture shows you that you should put some like a, an acoustic panel here, and then also here, um, and then some in the back too. Okay, so that's what that's what these people did here, where they've got the panels on the side for that first reflection point, and there's also probably some panels in the back, and then and then some other ones back here. Okay, um, is this totally necessary for you to make to make music? I mean, no, not really, because again, you can always use your headphones. But if you're trying to create a critical listening environment, these are some of the this is some of the science of sound that's going to help you get the best recordings. If if uh, if you listen to this in a room that doesn't have this, um, it will sound significantly different because it's not treated for being a critical listening environment. Um, can y'all take a screenshot of this? And it's also going to be in the lecture thing too. But this will help you when you're designing your own listening room. Okay. So as you can see, um, you kind of need some space whenever you're having a room to record in because as you can see, this this whole thing takes up an entire room, right? Um, and so if you're in your bedroom or something or in a living room, this might have to be altered just a little bit for, for you to make it work in your house. So here's another example of just some other random person's studio in their house. Um, they have a lot more paneling than the average person does. This is probably a really dry and focused room. But as you can see, they've got panels on the, on the side, on the walls or whatever. Um, and that's how it works for them. This is, this is kind of more along the lines of what my place looks like because it's a living room. It's not a professional commercial studio, but okay. So let's do some listening. Um, you guys get your headphones. Great. Yes, sir. I'm going to show y'all two studios here in San Antonio. I can't hear anything. Uh oh, hold on. Let me try. Can can everybody not hear anything? Yeah, I can't hear anything either. I can't hear anything either. All right, hold up. I will fix this. Stop sharing. Share one more time.
Hello? Hello? Can y'all hear this? Hi, my name is Mac Damon. I'm a producer based in San yes, Antonio, Texas from Stone Creek right, Sound. Yes, okay. You're about to hear a band called Recreating. I can hear. The song's called Daylight. Okay, so tell me what you heard. Like, I I want you to I want you to kind of pay attention to, like, uh, yes, the song. That's one thing, but I really want. As, so, as an audio engineer, I want you to think more along the terms of the sounds themselves. It's like the quality of high fidelity, the quality of like the airiness or focusness, um, the you know the shimmer. Like, like what do you what do you hear? Um, to start this off, I I believe the uh, the uh, singer was a little bit well, probably the singer, probably the other instruments were a little bit a little bit louder than the singer. That's one of the things I noticed, but I don't I don't I don't know if they did it on purpose, but because like I I, I kind of like felt like they were they were uh, when they recorded this they they did it like um, on live, you know you know what I mean. Sure. So yeah yeah that's that's my opinion on that. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I did hear that too, and I also heard uh like a little a little bit airy on the instruments and also the vocals where I hear a little bit of the room uh versus like a song on Spotify where you like it's like a clean cut, you know? Like we I hear them in the room, but not as prominent as you know one that has a whole bunch of echoes sure yeah it's like it's like just the right amount of room sound you know what i mean versus somewhere maybe like the chapel where it's like there's way too much echo in there way too much room sound so like that's why that's why this is kind of an ideal space for i guess you would call them more natural sounding recordings uh versus versus you going in a closet you know if you were to record vocals in your closet it would sound really dry really focused um um if that makes sense. And so, and so that's why, that's why there is no perfect studio. Like every studio has its own sound because of how acoustics work. 
and how you know treatment in there and what kind of microphones so that's like that's at the end of the day folks like what makes this an art form is that you're 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 kind of in the business of capturing audio in a very artistic way you know what i mean and so that's why um a lot of people will kind of mess around with like rooms to record in or mic placement um so that way it gets them a unique sound that's unique to that recording you know what i mean Yes, and, 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 and I'm not going to lie, it did sound great. It did sound great. However, it did sound somewhat um, different from other um, art forms, you know, compared to other art forms in the music industry. Sure. And so, you know, this is just one example of a type of studio sound. And we're going to watch another one. Here's another studio here in San Antonio. Actually, listen to this guy talk just a little bit. Today at Stone Creek Sound, we are uh, recording with warm audio gear, and we started our, our day off by uh, tracking the band, the band full, and for the drum overheads, I used the amazing sounding 251s, um, a stereo pair and a Bloomline array above the drum kit, and those were going through the uh, WA-273 pre's. Next week, we're going to talk about microphones and mic placement, so don't worry. We're gonna, I'm going to dive into that a bit more next week, okay? Which sound really, really, really incredible. Um, and then as the day progressed, we used another pair of 251s to record the acoustic guitars for this song. This song has lots of acoustic guitars. And so a majority of them were cut through um, a space pair of 251s, once again through the 273 Pre's, which we've really fallen in love with. And then um, additional overdubs on acoustic guitar were done with the 47, just placed at the 12th fret um, through a different Pre. And yeah, so those are all pretty cool mics, right? Um, they're, they're doing, like in this, this video, they're basically doing an advertisement for this microphone company called Warm Audio. So all the mics that they're recommending in this video are all products from this company. They're actually based in Austin. Um, pretty affordable mics. Or they're high th so if you liked the way the mic sounded in here, then maybe th you can check out some of their products that are pretty affordable. Okay, here's another studio in town called Cibolo. I think they're out in, I, I think this is the one that's out in Bernie. I'm not sure. Or shirts or something. Who knows? Okay, so as, as you're listening to this, I want you to compare how the last studio sounded to how this one sounds, okay? It's kind of different music, but listen more to the room and how it changes how the music sounds. How would you describe the sound of kind of more more of the more of the room than anything? Like, how would you describe that sound? Probably more uh, focused, um, less open. You know, I, I could um, you can clearly hear the sound coming out of the instruments. You know, and I, I don't I I didn't see any. Well, I did see kind of like uh, it was like a closed, small recording studio. You know. Um, so yeah. 
Okay. I don't see I, I don't see any 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 acoustic treatment around. So the I guess you could call the stone. I guess you could call oh, that technically right. like this. Yeah. And that's the thing is that there there are that's that like those vocab words that I asked you all to look up. Mm -hmm. Um that's going to kind of help identify like different types of uh treatment. You know what I mean? Like, right. cause you know how some of them are cloth, some of them are made of wood, some of them are stone, you know? So it's like each one of those, uh, types of treatment or materials has a different effect on the sound. On the sound. All right. Okay. Um, does it, uh, what about, what about Desiree or Gabriel? Um, yeah, it I agree with Arami. It was more clean cut, you know. Um, like you didn't like it, like in the last one, like I said, you could kind of hear the room. In the last one, this one not so much. Uh -huh. um, so like this one actually sounds like a track from Spotify, you know, where it's like clean cut. This is it recorded versus you know the, like the other one, like I said before. Yeah, sure. So I guess the lesson for today, folks, is that these things kind of can uh, enhance a recording or they can or they can hinder a recording. So here's what I mean by that. Like if there's a song that would sound amazing, like really nice and open, that's recorded in a very dry room, um, uh, you could do that. But like you got to think about and this is and this is kind of ultimately what you should write down. Um, it's that it, it depends on the song. OK, like that's kind of the golden sentence that like. Um, you always need to say, remind yourself of um, if you're doing any kind of recording or, or whatever, like it depends on the song or it depends on the piece. And so um, if I was going to record a choir, let me ask y'all, where, where, where would be a better studio to record a choir? The first one or this one? Uh, probably the uh, first one. What do y'all think? Um, I agree with that. The first one, simply because, um, you know, not everyone can have an individual mic if it's a big player. Uh -huh. So in that kind of room, you can hear, hear the room. You can pick up the voices like in the back. I guess. Yeah. And the reason why this is important is because if someone hires, someone hires you to be the engineer for their recording, like for example, um, to give you a little story, uh, Dr. Duggan was going to hire me to record his choir and he had asked me, he's like, hey, where do you think is the best place for us to do this recording? And me as the engineer, he trusted my opinion. And so, you know, that like that's it, that's kind of where this comes into play is that if someone asks you to record them, you're kind of the person that needs to guide them of where the recording is going to sound best. Does that make sense? Because you're the professional. Yes. So if you had a budget that you didn't have to pay for and the and the, the person was like, hey, Arami, um, I want you to record my uh, choir. Um, here's the budget I have. Can you take care of booking the studio and all that? And, you know, I'll go rehearse my choir. And it's up to you to be like, OK, I'll book the studio and I'll book whatever studio I think would be best. And here we go. You know. Yeah, definitely. So this is just a little that's kind of the little lesson for today. It's just being aware of that and how that can help you. Okay, so that sort of concludes of what I wanted to talk about in terms of um, like design and studio space. Basically, in a nutshell, it's important for you to think about um, and the sound of the room does affect the recording. Uh, does anyone have any questions about that and maybe how I can help you? Mm, no questions. Yeah, no, I don't have any questions. Okay, so my next thing I was going to talk about is the field recording. Is everyone doing okay with that? Any questions on that? No questions. Oh. Okay, so I think... Yeah, we just... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we just need to record, uh, like, what was it, three minutes? Five minutes? It was one to five okay. minutes, but remember, you're going to one to, five minutes. you're going to have to edit it. So I would recommend you record it longer than a minute because if you edit that, it's going to be like forty-five seconds or thirty seconds. You know what I mean? Um, and and here's uh -huh. the, here's the thing, y'all. Um, 
I know this is a class, but I also want you to like try to think of this as like like a real thing. You know what I mean? Because um, there are great opportunities for this. Like if you if you kind of put together a little portfolio, um, maybe maybe one of y'all or all of y'all hopefully can go intern at a local San Antonio studio and get some work. You know what I mean? Or or you can be like me and be your own like independent um, person. Actually, can I show y'all something real quick? Um, I want to, before we go, I'll show y'all a recording I did um, actually two days ago for Professor Stovall. I got to record her woodwind quintet, and I'll, I'll show y'all that session and um, what I did, and, and y'all can listen to maybe a, a take of it, and, and tell me what you hear, and tell me about the room. Sound, sound good? All right, but real quick, um, I will be back in two seconds. I need to go grab a drink of water really quick. I'll be back in two seconds. Hold on. Um, All right. Be right back. Go on. So, um, how is everyone doing? <laughs> um, I'm doing good. What about you? I'm doing great. I'm just, um, um, well, just chilling at home. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, the amount of work this semester is kind of like tough, you know. I feel like I feel like we've I've gotten like more work than what I used to when I used to uh, get um, last semester. I feel like uh, it's not overwhelming, but like it's kind of like you know. Yeah, for sure. well, yeah it's, I'm not stressed at all, you know, but like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like, you know, that little bit of pressure on me right now for this semester. But yeah. Do you think it's because, like, do you think it might be because of the type of uh, classes you're taking this semester besides yeah. like, um Yeah, I feel like, uh, like, like, yeah, probably because of the basic classes I'm taking, because I'm not taking, I'm not taking that much uh, music uh, courses this semester. So I feel like that's because, that's why I, uh, that's why I, uh, I feel like, you know, it's kind of like, it feels different. Plus I'm at home, you know, I'm not, I'm not on campus. So, so sad. Um, mm -hmm. But anyways, that was that, that was my story. <laughs> School doing okay, y'all? Yeah, we're doing great. Just, you know, yeah. college, st college uh, student um, struggles, you know, and uh, just, I hear that. It is, a, it, is a whole nother, it is a whole nother beast when you're out of school. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that's that's the world that I'm in right now, where it's like I thought stuff was hard in school, but I know everyone says that. But you know, when you're in the real world, it's like, all right, how am I going to pay for the house that I live in? <laughs> awesome! I know. I'm like, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I want to graduate already, and once I graduate, I'm gonna be like, oh my god, I don't want to pay taxes. <laughs> In due time. For real. <laughs> in due time. In due time. Okay. Can y'all see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to send y'all a link. And this is the link that you're going to listen to the audio from my computer. Can y'all open this link and stream it? I'm going to email it to you right now. Okay, so as you're listening to this recording, I want you to list a couple things for me, okay? I want you to tell me where where you think it was recorded. I also want you to tell me um, about the instruments, what instruments you hear. And also, just the, yeah, just the quality of the recording. Don't, don't, don't talk so much about the piece itself. But um, just more, think more about the audio and how it sounds. But let me see where. All right, open that. And let me know if you can hear this.
Can y'all hear that? Yes, I can hear it. Adami, Gabriel? I can hear it. I'm still, what's it, my, my page is still loading. Can you hear this? Yes, no? Yes, I can hear it. But I, I, I can't. I don't know why. Uh, let me let me refresh the page. Uh, it should it should be a link that says start. Uh, you click the link and then it'll say start streaming and then you and then and then you should be able to listen. Yeah. Mm, no. Mm, so sad. Okay, yeah. Listen to this. I'll, I'll I'll see if I can post this recording for you. That way you can listen to it too. Okay, I want you to I want you to listen to this and tell me what you hear. Okay, here we go. Um, I can't hear it for some reason. Okay, could you hear any of it? No, I couldn't. Couldn't? Desiree, could you? Yeah, hear I can't hear anything as well. I, I'm playing on the on on my phone. I can't hear anything. Yeah, I can hear it. Hmm. What? Well, um, it might be. I might be. Uh, or actually, how about this? I'll I'll go ahead and post this on on Blackboard. And y'all can tell me what you hear, and we'll talk about it next week, okay? Or actually, Desiree, right. Desiree what did you hear since you were able to hear it? Hey, Desiree. <laughs> oh. um, I, I think it might be in one of the... I'm guessing it was in one of those uh, studios, or it didn't have that much equipment. It was like that open room kind of studio. Am I right? Okay. So it had... Or I guess t like talk about the, the space. Like, did you think it was in an open space and a very uh, dry space? Uh, an open space. Yep, that's right. Um, because you could hear like when they finish notes, like some some of that echo, that reverb. Um, but I, I'll mm -hmm. let y'all I'll let y'all dive a little bit more into this, um, uh, this next week, okay? And and don't share these recordings because I'm actually I'm actually still. Uh, under contract with Professor Stovall with these recordings to give them to her. So just just listen to them and tell me what you think, okay? These will be on Blackboard and all that good stuff. Um, remember, for the uh, field recording project, it needs to be a WAV file that gets submitted into Audacity. So if you need help with that, you can send me your audio, like an MP3 or something, and then I'll convert it to WAV for you. That way y'all can throw it into Audacity. But if you want to tackle that problem on your own, more than welcome to as well, but we haven't talked about it, so that's why um, I'm, I'm open to do that for y'all. No problem. Um, does anyone have any questions about the project or what's coming up? Yes. Uh, what do we have to record for that project again? So we just have to go outside and find a, a recording field? 
Yes, all or anything there, in general. There's, there's detailed instructions on Blackboard. Oh, okay. So it'll like if you op if you click the name of the assignment, it should give you a list of details um, to complete all that stuff. Sound good? Awesome. Thank you. Okay, I'll see y'all next week. Okay. All right. Bye. See you later. Bye. Thank you. See you, sir. Uh -oh.